they scored a lot of beautiful goals, obviously. But they, I don't, I'd be interested to know if you remember this because it's the only time I've heard Craven Cottage, all of the ground, yeah. sigh. They just go, ah. It was like watching art. When the ball's pinged against Villa, I think it is, from left-hand side to right-hand side in the air, and you catch it. I can still see it happening, and I can hear the ground making that sound, which I've never heard in my life otherwise. Let me ask you something. Why do you see that is so special? Why uh, do you see it? Why because see I can't it? do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember. Did I it, remember it that. It didn't moment. feel special to you? For me, no. Someone could just chuck it to me from, from here, and it would bounce over. Uh, do, do you know what I mean? It was just the way you... There was no bounce. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was poetry is what it was. It was. Well, that's why I always, I'm still curious when people mention stuff like this. I'm like, why do you think that's so special? And they start to explain da, 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 like you did. And, and in my mind, it's like, it just, it just, it just stopped the ball. But I, I would say there are some moments in sport and in football where it doesn't become about competition anymore. It's just about art and you leave feeling like cleansed. You leave feeling like you've gone to a gallery. And when you used to do stuff like that, it didn't matter what the score was. You just felt like you'd seen something beautiful. And you, yeah, you know what I take from the moments like this? What you said before you start your sentence. Uh, yeah, because exactly. I always heard the roar of the crowd. Yeah. When I do something special uh, and I can hear the emotions and the, and the sounds. And when I hear it, in my mind, I'm like, this is poetry. You know, this is, this is, Sometimes how football should be played yeah. or things should be done. The result is important, of course. But sometimes you need to be able to put inside moments like this so the fans know when they came, they can see something special. Because you can win a game 1-0, but the game can be boring as... Can I curse here? <laughs> you know? I just, I just, uh... <laughs> can be boring as... You know, and you're <laughs> sitting there and you're almost sleeping. Yeah, you score, you win, you go home happy. But if you don't have that special moments... But it wasn't happening much... Like... You know, I'd say that we, you know, a team like Fulham, especially at that time, you got real workhorse players. You might have been sometimes referred to uh, as a luxury player. Yeah. Do you know, like a luxury item. And, and so we were used to that kind of workhorse style, you know, everyone sort of chips into it. So to see that at the cottage. Oh, magical. Was just... Yeah, but to see moments like this, for me to be able to do it and to afford myself to do it, I need I needed a player around me who are. Yeah, hard working yeah. players yeah. so they can take the ball and then give it to me yeah yeah and because of them i look good in a way yeah you know and sometimes the other way around i make them look good did you, know? you did you see the cottage as a place where you could sort of almost show off because united obviously is massive and so intense and there's so much pressure whereas fulham just felt must have felt like a bit of a relief in some ways you know where you could just like run the no show. relief no because i always put it expectation on myself first and foremost to to prove myself to me first and foremost that I can still play I can still stop the ball I used to stop and that was the most important to me other than that as I said <laughs> we had players in the team who are really really sh strong work ethic you know and they are fighting with the ball all the time you yeah, know yeah, Caragunis. yeah <laughs> different kind of <laughs> but he was a great <laughs> guy and he was a great guy every time I tell him Take the ball, give it to me, you know, <laughs> yeah, or yeah. to to see to see the to see well. Go, you run all day long. Take the ball, give it to me, please. Sure. You know, then I can take care of it. Yeah, yeah. But you cannot do one. Um, how do you say without the without yeah, sure. the other? You know, you need to respect your teammates. It doesn't matter how they are. You know, some players, uh, hardworking players, they know what to do. Take the ball, give it to the other player who have more ability. Did you see that that when before you joined Fulham? Did you see that balance? Did you look at the squad we had at the time and go, okay? Yeah, this will work. We've got the hardworking players. We've got players that... I, there was this rumour going around at the time as well, and I, I don't know what truth there is in that, that you, you wanted to play with Moussa Dembele. And then uh, Martin uh, Yo had to persuade you at that point that even though he had just gone, we had just lost him to Spurs, we still had a number of players similar. Was there anything in that? Do you remember? No, no, no because as I said, the fact that Martin Yo was a coach, that I know that he's going to trust me to play from the first minute until the last, that was the, the big thing for me. Uh, not so much who was in the squad, because intuition in my case is really important. I always lead my professional career. Uh, it was lead based on my intuition. In instinctive. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I knew. I knew what is going to work for me. And at that time, there was a choice to go to Italy. But then I chose to stay here in UK and play with Fulham. In the first season, we, we, when I was here, 15 goals. 
And we had we, we had so much joy playing around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Not joy. only on the pitch, outside the pitch as well. The, the, my teammates were a funny bunch of people, you know. When you have fun, we have fun. When you need to play, we play, you know. It, it, I had a great time, honestly. That's really good to hear that. Really good. Well, as we were looking, uh, we're doing a bit of um, sort of research. Obviously, we know all the, you know, the big stories and the big moments in your life, but we wanted to sort of like scratch beneath the surface a bit more. And we found, um, uh, do you remember Frimpong? Yes. Playing with Frimpong. And he was saying that there were moments sometimes in the dressing room you'd be drawing and you'd be drawing farms. A what? Farms? Drawing farms. His quote was he would, he would be there sketching for maybe sort of 20 minutes you'd have a sketchbook in the dressing room yeah (laughs) uh no i can draw i can pretty much draw whatever i want because when i when i see something i can draw it but i need to be in the mood for it i need to be relaxed my mind need to be on that type type of things and when i draw i draw it at home because i can relax and stuff like this Uh, in the dressing room maybe he was seeing me more of a (laughs) private type of guy you know i didn't speak so much uh, I was more quiet and just observing. When I needed to speak, I will speak, trust me, when I need to say something. But most of the time, I, left some, I leave some other players to, to talk because you have different personality in the dressing room. Some players are high-fiving other all the time, making jokes around. Me, I was more observing around and, and seeing what everybody is doing. Of course, that doesn't mean that, uh, that I will not talk if you want to talk to me, give you advice or whatever, stuff like this. Because if I tell you in the United dressing room, there are some players who are more private than myself. Right. So everybody is different and you need to respect that qualities. Do you think there's um, a misconception sometimes between being shy and private and arrogant? Because I know it in other sports people where, yeah. especially very successful sports people, when they're not outgoing as well, yeah. people think they're like they're holding something yeah. back. Exactly. That's, that's a wrong type of, of people to think about. If you don't know the guy, in my opinion, you cannot jump to conclusion. First, at least try to know him. Have a conversation swap some words, sentences, and then you make your conclusion around him. If you don't know him and you, and you mistake his shyness for arrogance, that's a mistake. And in my case, sometimes it happened because, as I said, I was very quiet. Uh, maybe you have a bad day in your private life or whatever. You don't want to speak. You know, you just sit, you think about stuff. Other times, you just don't know what to say. Oh, my God, Berks, what do we say now? What, if I say that, I'm going to look stupid? You know, you, just pure human things that you're going through around, around your mind. Uh, but sometimes it, exactly that happened. People maybe think that I, I was a bit arrogant. I can be arrogant if I want to, but that's not deep inside. That's not me. I was, I was trying to be more arrogant on the game uh, towards the opposition and leading with that arrogance and trying to show my teammates feed of my arrogance, get some of it, and let's be more sure of, of ourselves that we can do we can do a good result, even if you play a big team. Just go out there and play and enjoy. Yeah, yeah. 